Hello, my name is Kathy, and I'll be discussing homeopathic remedies. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. There are many alternative medical disciplines that work very well. The top of the list, and also one of the older healing modalities, is homeopathic remedies. So, what are homeopathic remedies and how do they work? To get into this, we need to discuss the medical paradigm that is traditional Western medicine and how it operates. Western medicine, or allopathic medicine, as it is known by, treats the symptoms of ailments of the body usually with prescription drugs or surgeries. Traditional Western medicine views the human organism as a kind of biological machine, and so that its remedies do not take into consideration that human beings are more than just biological machines. They have emotions, and they have mental capacities, and they have spiritual capacities. It seems rather peculiar not to take these factors into consideration when handling ailments. When you understand that all illness of the physical body starts in one of the higher bodies, either the mental body or state, the spiritual body or state, or the emotional body or emotional state of being, as an example of this principle, it is well known that a serious emotional shock to a person will cause some kind of a physical problem within the individual. The emerging ailment is not the result of some car wreck or falling downstairs or whatever. It comes as a result of a seriously shocked emotional body or state of being. This same principle is in effect for all ailments that happen to people. Ailments never happen in the physical body first. The last place a problem manifests is the physical body. So, if you're having an issue, you can be sure that you have had some mental or emotional or even spiritual disruption that has occurred long before the ailment has occurred to your physical body. When you understand that humans are not made of solid material, everything starts to fall into place. Think about this for a moment. You know that your physical body is made up of trillions of atoms. Each atom is in constant motion with an electron and a proton of various combinations of the same. Yet, at the same time, in order for there to be this constant movement, there has to be space. Empty space. Your seemingly solid physical body is nothing more than the atoms vibrating at certain vibrational frequencies. And this is true of the other bodies as well. The emotional body vibrates faster than the physical body, and the mental body vibrates faster than either of the physical or emotional bodies, and the spiritual body vibrates even higher. It is because these other bodies vibrate at ever higher levels that you can't see them with your physical eyes. Your physical body might be thought of as frozen light, if you think about it. When you understand that the human organism is comprised of various different frequencies, you can begin to understand how homeopathic remedies and other alternative medical modalities work. Homeopathic remedies are based upon the principle that like cures like. This is, this is the idea that a substance that causes the symptoms of a disease in a healthy person would cure similar symptoms in a sick person. It was first developed by Samuel Hahnemann in 1796. Dr. Hahnemann began experimenting with various herbs and other substances by ingesting them to determine what effect they would have on his body and mind. For example, he took Peruvian bark, which was used to treat a person sick with malaria. To his surprise, he found that by taking this substance, he was able to produce in himself the same set of symptoms as those suffered by the person sick with malaria. The same substance used to treat the disease also cured the disease. 
After testing many of the substance caused to treat disease, he found over and over again that the very substance used to alleviate symptoms in a sick person would create those same symptoms in a healthy person. This led to the now famous mantra of homeopathy that like cures like. It became known as the law of similars. A substance which produces symptoms in a healthy person cures those symptoms in a sick person. Dr. Hanneman compiled an exhaustive list of symptoms that were found to be associated with the ingestion of a great variety of substances. This process became known as proving. Volunteers were given a substance and had their reaction to that substance recorded. Having compiled an extensive list of substances and what symptoms they produced, Hanneman proceeded to begin using these substances to treat various sicknesses. While he found that patients would get cured, they often would suffer initial severe aggravation of their symptoms. Hanneman then reduced the doses of the substances he was giving patients to one-tenth the original amount of the solution or remedy. This reduced the aggravation of symptoms. Hanneman pursued, proceeded to dilute his medicine still further all the way down to where the substance had no effect because there essentially was no medicine left in the solution. Hanneman then made an interesting discovery. When the substance, uh, when he submitted a solution to a series of various vigorous shakes, successions as he called them, the solution would not only become less aggravating or non-aggravating to the patient's symptoms, but the substance became more potent and therefore more effective in facilitating a cure. Hanneman had, in essence, found a way to produce a healing agent without any side effects. Depending on whether a substance was soluble in water or alcohol, he would mix one part of the substance with 99 parts of water or alcohol and then submit the mixture to 100 vigorous shakes. Then he mixed one part of the mixture he had just shaken to 99 parts of a new amount of the liquid he was using and again shook the mixture 100 times. He would repeat this process up to 30 times and found that even with dilutions that showed only one molecule of the original substance left in the solution, the remedy was shown to be effective in facilitating a cure and with absolutely no side effects. Hanneman had discovered what later became known in science as Brownian movement, which shows that all molecules contain energy and the particles contained within them move at high speeds. It was this discovery that led to nuclear fission and fusion, leading to the production of atomic energy. These findings show that all matter is in fact energy, and in homeopathy, the repeated dilutions and shakings of a substance released a curative energy inherent in the substance. The fact that homeopathic remedies contain no detectable material trace of the original substance, and yet facilitate a curative effect shows that the shakings transmit energy from the original substance to the fluid or neutral matter in which it is diluted. Hanneman concluded that homeopathically prepared remedies were working at an energy level and not a material level. Since such remedies had a curative effect on the body, he further concluded they must be affecting the body's energy field. He therefore determined that the basic cause of illness is a disturbance in the body's energy fields. Energy fields, or vital force, are common considerations in health modalities such as acupuncture, acupressure, and even chiropractic. It is felt that if you can bring the body into a balanced state of energy, you can bring about a curative effect. Homeopathy is a healing modality based upon stimulating and alternating the vital force of the body. Homeopathic remedies appear to work by affecting the body's electromagnetic fields. Electromagnetic fields are characterized by the phenomena of vibration. As electrons race around the nuclei of atoms, 
They oscillate back and forth at specific frequencies or vibrational levels. Homeopathic remedies appear to work at the vibrational levels of the atoms that make up the body. Therefore, these remedies work with the body's energy fields in facilitating healing. Since all substances possess electromagnetic fields, the task of the homeopathic doctor is to find the substance with a vibrational rate most closely matching that of the patient during an illness. The patient's vibrational rate is determined based on an analysis of the symptoms being experienced by the patient. The vibrational rate of the remedy used is based on past proving of that remedy. When the vibra vibration rate of the patient and the remedy match, a phenomenon known as resonance occurs. This results in an increase in the patient's electromagnetic field at the precise frequency needed to facilitate a cure. While there are several ways homeopathic remedies are made, a common method becomes, uh, begins with one millimeter of substance, that's the mother tincture, and 99 millimeters of solution, water or alcohol, placed in a glass flask. This solution is then shaken 100 times to achieve a ratio of 1 to 99. Then one milliliter of the solution just shaken is added to a second flask of 99 millimeters of water or alcohol and again shaken 100 times. This is referred to as the Centus Missile Scale method of dilution. Centus Missile means one hundredth of something. The number of times this procedure is repeated with a given substance will determine the potency of the homeopathic remedy. If this procedure is done six times, the potency would be 6C. If done 12 times, it would be 12C, and so forth. With each successive repetition of this process, the amount of the original substance becomes less and less in the solution, while at the same time, the solution itself becomes more potent due to the number of shakings or successions. Another method follows the same procedure as ab above, but does so according to the decimal scale. Decimal means one-tenth of something. Under this system, you add one part mother tincture to nine parts solution. This produces a 1x potency. As the procedure is repeat repeated, the potency level increases, as in 3x, cx, etc. Because the decimal scale uses a ratio of 1 to 9, and the centimesal scale uses a ratio of 1 to 99, remedies labeled as X potency are less potent than C potencies. For example, even though a 6X and a 6C receive the same number of successions, because the 6X is in a 1 to 9 ratio and the 6C is a 1 to 99 ratio, the 6C would have greater dilution than the 6X and therefore be more, more potent. Potency is determined by the number of successions in conjunction with the ratio of dilutions. A 12X, even though receiving more successions than a 6C, would still be only as potent as a 6C because the 6C has much greater dilution ratio than the 12X. Remember, in homeopathy, greater dilutions creates the higher potency. As a general rule, a 3C will be approximately as potent as a 6X, a 6C will be approximately as potent as a 12X, and so forth. It is not known how they differ quantitatively as the X potencies in the above example have received more successions than the C potencies. The best potencies for treating acute illness are often 6C or 12C. They are strong enough to address most acute symptoms. Remedies in 30C and 200C and above are better used with professional guidance. They also have a narrower range of action, so the prescription Prescription needs to be more precise than for lower potencies in order for the remedy to work. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists though so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video.
Take care.